Welcome, welcome. Happy to have you on the webinar. We are going to get started in a minute. We're just going to let a few of you to join on. Wow, looks like we've already got 40 people online. I'm excited for tonight's talk. We are going to dive into adaptogens and elixirs. So give me a minute. We're just going to let people gather around the digital campfire. This is what day 60 with the COVID masks on, but I think we're all starting to come out of that experience uh, feeling rebirthed, hopefully. Um, but anyway, just give me a second. We'll just let people jump on live. And there is a Q&A part of this, so ask away. There's also a chat, so you can put in there. Uh, while we're getting started, let me know where you're coming from in the chat. And do you have a tea? Have you tried any of our elixirs? Are you drinking anything like that? So I'm just going to throw this up live on Facebook as well so that we've got more people uh, who can join from there. Um, and we'll get started in a minute. Welcome, welcome again. So yeah, let us know where you're coming from if you're joining us live. And if you're seeing this in the recording, just know that um, you can always watch this again. I'm just going to put this up live on Facebook too, so just give me a second. All right, we are live and we are ready to go. Welcome to the evening. This is Elixirs, Elixirs and Adaptogens, and we're doing this on a Zoom webinar. If you're joining us from Facebook, and you want to see some of the other ones, this is part three of a four-part series, go to HarmonicArtsLive.com where you can check out all the other ones and all the recordings are there. As well as you sign up, you'll get an email that'll send you the recording about 24 hours after. Looks like we've got about 145 people on our uh, Zoom right now and that's just growing and growing as we go along. And on Facebook, um, we've got one of our awesome team members, Elise, who's going to be answering some questions. I'll also join in and answer questions later there. Uh, just to check in with our folks, looks like we got a bunch of people in, coming in on the chat, coming from Courtney, from Camrose, from Water Lake, from Peach Lake, for Peachland, sorry, Grand Prairie, Vancouver, Oklahoma, nice, some Americans out there. Uh, looks like some folks are using some of this stuff, drinking up good tea, somebody from Cortez, from Washington, D.C., Qualicum Beach, Langley, Royston, Powell River, Naramata. All right, from New York City, all right. Uh, that's the hotbed right now. From Fanny Bay, close to me, from Calgary, California. All right, we got a bunch of people joining live. I'm excited for this topic. I'm really a fan of adaptogens. I find that they are the medicine of the time. Most of us are not suffering from so many acute illnesses like we did three, four hundred years ago. Nowadays, it's chronic disease that has come in and really shown our society a uh, loop, run us for our money. And our medical system's not always set up to properly deal with some of these chronic imbalances. The beauty of herbs like adaptogens is that they help modulate the body. So we're gonna talk a bit about those. We're gonna talk about some various adaptogens. We're also gonna talk about elixirs and how they work that way. All right, so um, let's see. Hey, somehow I've got you, at least joined on live. I can see you. I can't see me, but that's okay. We'll just keep going um, and see how it, this works. Uh, anyway, going on the live, send me in chat those folks. Let me know if you can see me clearly and if everything is thumbs up and we'll just keep going. All right, great. So um, coming on to just talk about elixirs and adaptogens. The first thing to know about adaptogens is that they've been used throughout history for a long time. You know, there's recorded history of using herbs like rhodiola since well before, uh, well before some of those herbs have been used forever. Uh, things like Siberian ginseng, the ginsengs, the reishi mushroom, they have 4,000 years of history throughout Chinese medicine. This term adaptogen is really something that's kind of close to my heart because it's, it's something I believe I am, I believe you are, the adaptogen we want to see in the world. And to be an adaptogen means to be mutable and to balance out stress and stressful situations. And that's what a lot of the adaptogens do. 
it's kind of uh, interesting because many of us think of plant medicine or herbs or food as having a A plus B equals C response. So I take A thing because I have B illness and I get C response. That's not really how adaptogens work. They aren't for that acute first level of defense. They're more for building and toning the body so that whenever A is you and B situation comes along, you don't just get C response all the time. You get a, a ability to adapt to whatever is needed. So many of these adaptogens can lower blood pressure or high or rise blood pressure if you're out of balance in either way. Many of them are really good for adrenal health if you are over firing or under firing. It helps stabilize that. Now each adaptogen is unique in itself, but when we're gonna go deep into each one of them or into a few of them anyway, we've only got like an hour and 15 minutes. We're gonna try and compress a week long talk <laughs> into this short period of time. And I also just wanna invite you that there is so much information on the internet now on adaptogens because they are a new kind of buzz in the world where a lot of us are suffering from these chronic illnesses. So they work for people who are not super sick for helping restore those who are fairly vital still. If we're in an acute situation, say we got a cold, say we have COVID, say we have something along those lines, that's not when we're looking to our adaptogens. That's when we're looking for our single directional herbs that are gonna really focus on that one thing. That's where our oil of oreganos and golden seals and osha roots and all these kinds of herbs come in. But some of the immune herbs that are adaptogenic are things like astragalus, right? That has that adaptogenic quality or licorice root even has an adaptogenic quality that's soothing to many tissues. We see that most of the adaptogens have this panacea effect in the body. One easy one as an example is moringa, which is a very new herb to the world of adaptogens. It's been used for a long time, but it's been used for over a hundred different disease states. And it's herbs like that, that we see have this adaptogenic function. All right, so as we get going, um, I just wanna invite you all to ask questions in the q and A. I'm gonna answer questions at the end. We'll take a break partway through to answer some of those, and we'll just keep going that way. So basically just getting started, I'm just gonna go from gallery view to speaker view. All right, so getting started, at Harmonic Arts, we've been making adaptogen lattes and superfood tonic elixirs for a while now. And so I'm going to jump into talking about some of those and how to make those, how to make them for yourself, some of the blends we work with, some of the herbs we like the most, and uh, some of the ways to put them into your lifestyle. Adaptogens can easily be taken in capsules. Most of them come in powder. You can make teas, you can make tinctures, uh, you can turn them into syrups, or you can make these elixirs. And we're going to talk about that this is my favorite way. Give us a thumbs up if you've ever had a herbal elixir or a adaptogen latte or some kind of hot drink like this. We consider that the new coffee. That's what I consider it, the new coffee for the modern age. Uh, things very simply like mushroom hot chocolate. Very simple adaptogenic coffee substitute. There are many, all right, we got a lot of people saying, yep, 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 I've had them, love them. They become become a real easy part of our lifestyle. And for me, I tend to be the type of person who eats two meals a day. And that's why I like adaptogens because they are super nutrient dense and they're calorie shy. They don't have that many calories for the amount of nutrition they have. So, cause I believe in this concept of slight intermittent fasting, which means giving my digestive system a break every so often, I find making adaptogen lattes, making these kind of drinks a really easy way to sort of skip a meal slash give my body nutrition without requiring this massive digestive load. That's how I like to use adaptogen. So typically I don't have a breakfast first thing in the morning. I make myself like an adaptogen latte and I make a drink with many of these things in it and will slowly keep my blood sugar stable because many of them do that all the way till like 11 or noon when I eat my first meal and then have a good sized lunch and a good sized dinner. There's been a bit of, uh, actually, I, I want to just one thing that kind of really inspired me to get into adaptogens more and get into these kind of fortified type tonics is that there's only one thing that's ever been shown to increase longevity. And it's not exercise. It's not um, all these different health crazes and different types of diet. It's not even red wine and smoking, which some people <laughs> who live forever seem to be doing. It's 
not even living in a high altitude or drinking great water, although water is a huge piece of it, the one thing that's actually shown to increase longevity is a little bit of calorie restriction to not eat overly amounts. I mean, our society right now is overfed and undernourished. And that's just the case for the typical Western diet. And anywhere the Western diet goes, we see this kind of uh, backlash of chronic illness follow it. Overgrowth of candida, inflammation in the body, uh, more proneness to cancer, more of these uh, kind of autoimmune diseases, Crohn's, all of this type of stuff often comes out of a Western diet. And the adaptogens, and many of the adaptogens come out of a very different way of showing up for, from a dietary perspective. It's that this idea of let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. It's medicine food. That's what it is. It's simply gentle herbs that tone the body gently over time and give us more support and adaptability and vitality. So many of these adaptogens are very safe to use as a food. We're talking of things like maca and ashwagandha and rhodiola and holy basil. All of these are very gentle herbs. There's very few people who have counterindications to them. Now there's some people who can take too much maca and whoa, it, it can cause an effect. But like the ginsengs and the Siberian ginseng and the Kishu Wu and the Romania root, these are all Asian adaptogens that have been classically used to restore balance to a body, to build up and fortify it. And that's what we're kind of going to talk about. Those are some of the top herbs of the time right now. In fact, they will be some of the most popular herbs in the health food stores because they're quite safe and because they can have a panacea effect in the body. And that's what we're looking for when it comes to adaptogens, when it comes to our nutrition. I like them because I'm not one who gets sick all the time. I often don't get an illness when it comes through. And part of that is because I'm taking adaptogens, but part of that is just that the adaptogens are the right herb for someone like me. If I'm getting sick all the time in a deep, weakened immune system, I wanna start first off focusing on diet and doing some cleansing building protocols. We're gonna talk a bit more about that next week in our next week's webinar on cleansing and building and how to cleanse effectively. But first I wanna kinda of move out an illness and then get into this restoring and building and cleansing phase. Once I've done that, I'm right back into the adaptogens. And I find that these herbs tend to be my favorite for the fall, all through the winter, into the spring. I don't do a lot of herbal medicine in the summer as much as I'm wild foraging and doing that kind of thing. But the adaptogens help us with those transitional seasons to essentially think of them if you were a castle, and I talked about this last in uh, the immune talk last week, but if you were a castle, and you were trying to fortify your system, the adaptogens are the engineers that help build up the moats and strengthen the walls and fortify you from outside invaders. They are not the archers on the gate. They are not the single directional herbs that are gonna take out the big bad guys, the Mongolian horde if it comes along. These are simply your, your sophisticated wisdom teachers. They're your body's educators. I think all herbs, work in a way that they teach the body how to show up in a, in a specific way. They share their personality, they share their wisdom with us, and that's how they work. It's not just their active compounds. Now, in the modern scientific perspective, we're looking for active compounds, and that can be effective, and it can help people understand why a herb might work in a certain way, but herbs like turmeric are a great example where the active compound seems to be curcumin or the curcuminoids in there. And yet there are many cases in which uh, people have taken turmeric with curcumin free turmeric and had anti-inflammatory effects. In fact, uh, in some of the studies done on turmeric that had no curcumin in it, it was just as effective as the turmeric that didn't. So as a herbalist, I say the whole herb and nothing but the herb. So help your herbalist uh, to, so go with these whole herb things. I'm not a big fan of just doing single chemistry extracts. Uh, I don't think they're very effective. And I think those are what cause the side effects that we see. And this part of the problem with the pharmaceutical industry and the, the individual ingredients of a single chemical is it doesn't have this kind of modulating benefit on the body. Many of our best herbs 
have certain types of fiber to them that kind of slow down the absorption or they have different aspects of chemistry that might balance that out. So when we look at herbs like ashwagandha, we're not just looking for the active ingredient, we're looking for where was it sourced and what is it a high quality, is it fresh? That's much more important. All right, the whole plant, you got that. All chakras, you got that, I like that, somebody said in the comments. So it's not just herbs, there's also a couple of seaweeds that are adaptogens. The brown seaweeds like kombu, that's a great adaptogenic seaweed. It's got fucoidin in it and fucoxanthins in it and these branched polysaccharides that modulate the body. There's also mushrooms that have adaptogenic function. And those we talked about in the first week's one, you can go back and see that video. That's like reishi, chaga, turkey tail, uh, those kind of mushrooms that might be helpful. Also like cordyceps, lion's mane, uh, red belted polypores from our part of the world. Now, now, one thing I wanted to just bring up with adaptogens is that many of the herbs that are classified as an adaptogen in our modern culture are not true adaptogens. They're more like tonics and they might be specific to a certain area. Say astragalus, for example. It's not a true adaptogen in all functions of the body. It's more specific to the lungs and to the immune system, right? It's got that kind of deep immune, almost adaptogenic function, but it might not be the same kind of herb that's gonna work with stress. If you look at a dictionary definition of adaptogens, you're gonna see something that modulates stress and helps balance out the stress response in the body. We know that stress is a killer. We know that in our modern world, we're moving way too fast. We've got these little pocket gods. We've got these cell phones. Uh, we've got computers and our technology is interfacing us at the speed of light. So we tend to stress out a lot. We tend to be often in the stressful situations. We're not slowing down to eat our food properly, which is causing more stress on the body. We're eating the wrong foods, causing more stress. So I'm not gonna go too deep down that rabbit hole, but just know that the functionality of why adaptogens are so important in the modern age is because we have just overblown our systems. Our circuits are firing on all sides. Our cylinders are, are moving at, at, at every different degree and we need a little bit of support. So I found this to be a huge part of my lifestyle now, pretty much for the last 10 years, I've been working with adaptogen lattes, making elixir drinks and making that type of thing just as part of my regular every day. That's what got me into medicinal mushrooms. That's what's got me into some of these top herbs. So let's get into some of the herbs. I'm gonna, again, we got a couple of questions in the, in the question and Q and A in our Zoom. So if you're asking questions in the Facebook, jump on in and ask them away. I'll go through later and Elise will also be going through to help support with that. Okay, so the first question, I'm just gonna jump in before we talk about individual adaptogens. How about integrating adaptogens into microdosing regimes? So those of you who don't know what microdosing is, it's taking small amounts of psychedelics that don't get you high, that um, support cross-brain um, cross firing and give more sensory gating channel opening to expand our vision of the world. Uh, this is on the fringe. This is a new kind of thing that a lot of people are starting to explore. I'm not gonna say yes or no on doing that for yourself. That's up to you to choose and you can read all up about microdosing. But I believe that adaptogens actually are um, much more functional than microdosing or are useful in integrating into that. I would rather see somebody take ashwagandha and lion's mane along with their microdose if they're gonna do that to modulate the body's response and work with that kind of neurotransmitter support. I've seen a lot of people who have had good results in doing adaptogens along this line. So, okay. Next question is Moringa. Um, on a daily basis, how would you recommend it? How would you dose it kind of thing? Essentially, I would say Moringa is something that's known as the miracle tree. It's been used daily for a long period of time. I would use it when the body is nutrient deficient. We often give it to pregnant women and to um, nursing moms or people who are not digesting and getting their nutrition properly, or kids who might not be getting their greens. I do this daily, for sure. With any herb though, I have this tendency of wax on, wax off. So my belief with herbs like that is that you're gonna do it for say three weeks on, one week off, or maybe five days on and take a break on the weekend. This saves a bit of money, and you get more bang for your buck. If you take something all the time, you slowly build up tolerance to it. So it's better to take it 
part-time um, and to take a little break from it, okay? Um, and then another question is, what's a good adaptogens for eczema? Eczema is a tough one, um, and I, I will just touch on this before we get into each individual adaptogen. Sorry for those who are listening wanting to hear about each individual one, but I'll just say that we don't ever cure the body by working on the skin. Eczema and many other skin issues like psoriasis and itchy redness, red cheeks, uh, inflamed skin of any kind comes from inside the body. That's where we want to put our primary focus. We might have some external things we put on there, uh, but even Moringa is actually a good one for that. I would say though, it's often an oil metabolism and a digestive inflammation issue. So we're looking at healing the microbiome in this case, and we're working at supporting the liver in metabolizing oils better. So I might go to things like burdock and dandelion and those kind of herbs for cleansing the liver. I might go to some of the herbs that are anti-inflammatory for the gut, might do slippery elm and marshmallow. Those aren't really adaptogens, but then if I was to layer in some adaptogens for that, I'd probably go into the medicinal mushrooms to support the gut health and I'd make sure I got good essential fatty acids. And that's all we're gonna say about eczema for now. Um, just know that you can't treat it on the skin. It's an internal issue. And often that means you've got inflammation in the gut. Okay, so um, next one more question. I'll, I'll answer two more questions and then we'll get going. Um, what would you say elixirs? Um, when you say the word elixirs, you're not necessarily meaning an alcohol and the honey and the alcohol elixir, right? Yes, again, these are kind of nebulous terms. Adaptogens are slightly nebulous. Tonic is slightly nebulous in our society. It's been co-opted uh, for a kind of larger group. And the word elixir, same thing. There's a type of elixir that might be like a honey syrup. That's an alcohol honey. I'm talking about a herbal tonic drink. The idea of using honey or using some kind of sweet to enhance the delivery system of the adaptogens and bring them into a hot tonic beverage. So more like a herbal latte. That's what I'm meaning when I say elixir at this point, although there is definitely more than one definition. Okay, I'm going to park it at that. Let's talk about a few individual adaptogens. So the first one that most people know of is ginseng, right? Ginseng is the most classic adaptogen on the planet. Uh, there are two different kinds. There's the American and the Korean ginseng. And then there's also the Siberian ginseng. And then there's also the herbs that want to be a ginseng. Like maca is considered a, a Peruvian ginseng. Or suma is considered a Brazilian ginseng. Or ashwagandha, an Indian ginseng. So all the herbs want to be like ginseng because it's the supreme adaptogen. But this is a herb that's been used for 4,000 years throughout Asia. And it has this real deep tonic effect on the whole immune system and on the fight or flight response in the adrenals and kidneys. It rebuilds that kidney energy. And that's partly why ginseng is so important to the Chinese cultures. It's one of those herbs that's more for as we get older. So a lot of young people start wanting to take herbs like ginseng. They got a lot of fire in them already. They maybe don't need that. Ginseng's for an old man in that sense. So someone like my dad, takes good amount of ginseng in the mid afternoon to keep him going through the day. We can take herbs like that when we're younger, but there's another concept that I just want to put out as a, a caveat is you've always got to pay the piper back. You can't just borrow, borrow, borrow. So if you stimulate the body with say a Korean ginseng for your entire time through university, you might crash after you stop taking Korean ginseng because you've just been supercharging your system. I've seen this happen with a few people who get really into adaptogen culture where they just load on the adaptogens, they take super high doses, macro doses of these things, don't eat as much food, don't get other nutrition, and then they crash after a while. It's not sustainable. Adaptogens should be part of a sustainable lifestyle, part of a whole foods diet. And I like to use them as like one of three meals. So I, that's how I work with them. I also take some adaptogens in a capsule once in a while. Don't tell harmonic arts because we don't sell capsules. No, but I have done that in the past um, when I'm traveling. Or one thing we like to make is we make to, like to make these little herbal pills. And I'll talk about how to make those in a minute. I think they're really fun. They're an easy way to turn adaptogen powders into something you can take with you on the road. All right. So Uh, this herb is, is so famous uh, that it's, it's really become 
uh, an interesting kind of dialogue. Whenever you go to Chinatown, you see walls of ginseng. I, I guess I'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's really easy to find out in the literature. But just know that an, an ironic thing about it is uh, that the American ginseng is what all the Asian people want, and the Asian ginseng is what all the North Americans want because the American ginseng is much more yin and cooling and restorative. So many of the Asian cultures are looking for that cooling restorative adaptogen versus the American ginseng that is more yang and heating and energizing. So if you need more kick, you're gonna to go to the Asian ginseng. If you need to calm down the body, then you wanna to go to the American ginseng. Now there's another one that I think is way better than that, and it's Siberian ginseng. That's Eleutherococcus. It's not a true gin, ginseng, but it's in the Aurelia family, in the same family as ginseng, same family as Devil's Club here on the West Coast, which is one of our kind of adaptogenic herbs, blood sugar stabilizing, Panax, it's an Oplopanax versus Panax ginseng. And those kind of herbs are very supportive. Now I'll say uh, Luthro is our most neutral adaptogen that there is. And from my perspective, it's superior to both Asian and um, the North American ginseng for two reasons. One is it's neutral in its playing field. It works as a much better master herb in a formula. I tend to believe that adaptogens are much better taken together than just one on its own. So I would highly recommend you work with an adaptogenic formula versus just taking one individual. And Eleuthero is a great master herb because it's very neutral in its energetics. It's also, the second reason, it's much more sustainable and viable. It's easy to get, it's not as expensive, and it has a lot of those qualities of protecting the adrenals and kidneys and restoring energy. It's not heating, so it's not going to drive energy up. It's not cooling, it's not going to drive it down. It's been used for fight or flight stress response for a long time. Kidney food, blood sugar stabilizing, blood pressure regulating, a number of these things. This is something we're going to see when it comes to adaptogens in general is they have a panacea effect in the body, most of them. So they're a nice herb to add into our lifestyle because many of them have that dual directional effect. If we're overstimulated or understimulated, they're mostly rebalancing and calibrating. This means if we don't actually know our energetics or we don't know what's going on for us, they're generally quite safe and they generally will have a tonic restorative effect in our body. Okay, so the next most famous adaptogen is ashwagandha. And ashwagandha is really gaining, gaining a lot of fame these days. I will say that's the one I'm saying is the Indian ginseng or some people would call it that. Why it's getting more famous because it's actually more yin and restorative, more cooling. And so it's good for the monkey mind of the North American. It's good for the circular thinking Reishi is definitely a predominant one that I would prefer for that, but ashwagandha has this cooling down the head. So it'll cool the head of a hot head or someone who has insomnia. It'll help them sleep and relax better. Now it's not really a true nervine like some of our nervine herbs. It's just cooling and descending in nature and has that ability to help kind of support hormone regulation and support stress and adrenal regulation as well. So Ashwagandha is another good one that I would recommend that people kind of get into and start to look at. Other ones that I'm really a big fan of, and we'll all just talk about a few, but I want to get into formulas and why we would choose to work with a formula of adaptogen and how we might make that into a blend or a tea or whatever we might do. So another one that I'd be a, I'm a big fan of is the mushrooms. Um, I've got a whole line of mushrooms here. Reishi mushroom, this one that's right behind my head is a reishi mushroom. That one protects us from our own mind, grounding us into our body. Great for heart irregularity, palpitations, asthma, anxiety, all these kinds of things, but also just kind of like meditation in a bottle to just bring us back into our body. We see it useful for blood pressure. We see it for antibacterial, antiviral, um, antipathogenic effects and immune modulating in general. So reishi is just a supreme adaptogen in my mind. Between those ones, those are some of the top adaptogens some of the other ones are really, a lot of them restore balance to the kidneys. And so we'll see them in many stress formulas for adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout. Those are things like Hishu Wu or Fo Ti. Fo Ti is a deep root. They often cure it in a black bean sauce to make it a more viable uh, adaptogen to kind of really give it more center of gravity to the kidneys. 
helps really restore the jing in the body or the energy of the body over a long period of time. So many people love to work with his shi wu when they get older or through the winter months as the kind of kidney energy wanes and as we get kind of cold and we're in our home to kind of energize and keep that body moving. Another good one that I love is rhodiola. Rhodiola is the Siberian kind of uh, Norse Viking adaptogen. It also grows in Northern Alberta. We see it up here in that part of the world. It's tightening and astringent. So it's toning the tissues and protecting us from outside influence. It also has this ability to really energize and give stamina and fortification. Hence the Viking herb. There's some literature that shows that rhodiola was mixed into some of the beers and some of the old ferments, the meads, rhodiola meads were made from the Viking culture. And that was one of their kind of resilient herbs. Chew on a root of rhodiola when you're on the ocean going over to England to take over. Anyway, the idea is, is that it's one for stamina and for building that up. Now, I wanna just put one more kind of caveat in here. Every different type of adaption has a different type of energetic. And so we often wanna match the energetics of the person with the adaptogen. So someone who has weak, flaccid tissues, who is soft bodied, not so sinewy and tendony like me, they would do good with these astringent adaptogens like rhodiola. Someone who is over firing all the time like me, uh, would do really good with Hishu Wu, the kidney restorative adaptogen. So it just, you may want to pick the right one for you. Someone who is thinking too much, ashwagandha, right? Someone who is uh, stressed out all the time, holy basil is another great one for, the, for calming down the nervous system and supporting an upward moving energetic. Holy basil is a great adaptogen for that. So there's a lot that we can use and look at that way. And I will jump into some questions. Um, as we go, I just see from some of the comments that someone in Alberta said in order that they've started growing rhodiola this year, right on. Someone's asking about motherwort. Is motherwort an adaptogen? Not classically, but it has a bit of that effect. It's just very um, bitter. Motherwort's a bit bitter. So it's uh, tightening the tissues, increasing liver production, good for the lungs. Um, it's an amazing herb, but it's not a true adaptogen, although we might use it that way. Another one I like that I'm now classifying as a bit of an adaptogen is pine pollen. Now it's more of a tonic, it's got androgen, so it will build testosterone, but it'll only build testosterone if someone doesn't have sufficient levels of testosterone. Otherwise, it won't. That's why I believe it's more of an adaptogen, that it actually supports the body. We're about to come into pine pollen season here in about a month, uh, where you can pick all the pine pollen you want. But here's a herb that has this like energizing nutritive effect, and it's full of antioxidants and free radical scavengers. It's also got glutathione and coenzyme Q10, and it's got things for histamines in it that might actually work with pollen allergies. So it's another one of these adaptogens I would use in a formula to kind of work with giving more energy to that blend. So let's talk about some formulas. Um, let's look at um, what we might use again there's so many more i haven't talked about like shizandra that's a great one i'll dive into some of those as we go along i want to just start with we've been playing with adaptions for a long time and again i've been making these elixirs for a long time we're going to talk about a few of those and how to make your own elixir but two of the products that i really wanted to just kind of bring to focus here in this webinar is our radiance and our resilience from harmonic arts now these are little eco canisters we love these you can easily compost them. They're 100% compostable. You can plant a plant in them if you want when you're done with them. Uh, they're easy to use. Anyway, radiance and resilience are two true adaptogen blends. So radiance is more of our hormone balancing, give you that inner glow, kind of working in the heart area, in the hormone level area. And this is more of that like calming down the body. We call it a little more yin, a little more feminine, uh, whereas the re resilience a little more masculine. Now, that doesn't mean like men should take resilience and women should take um, radiance. Someone like me, who um, is quite tight bodied, the radiance is actually a much, it's a, it's a beautiful blend. I love this one. My, my wife loves the resilience. So we'll talk a bit about what's in them and what makes that work. Uh, typically when you go to formulating with herbs and with adaptogens, you want to, what, what I've been trained in from Chinese tonic herbalism is creating a master to the formula and then building out the supporting allies around that. So in this case, 
um, we, we really wanted to kind of bring it into having ashwagandha as one of its masters. So ashwagandha is that kind of primary top adaptogen, but it also has a supportive herb of shatavari in there as well. So ashwagandha is more yin, shatavari is also asparagus root, and it's a little more yang, a little more energizing. This works really well together to get more balance to this. So in this case, it almost has like two kind of masters in that way. Um, it's got this yin and yang balance of duality. This one, so just to touch in on um, Shatavari for a second, that one, the Sanskrit word means she who slays a hundred men or slays basically she, she who conquers a hundred men or a thousand men even. It's basically this female Xena warrior energetic of like powerful energetic that's kind of vibrant and vigorous. And this helps energize the body. I like that for this one. We also put in this one, Maca. And maca is that kind of Peruvian, as I called it, the wannabe Peruvian ginseng. Essentially, it's an overglorified turnip uh, that lives in the high mountains. We see this commonly of adaptogens. They live and thrive in these really harsh environments. I've grown maca here on the West Coast, and guess what? It's got lots of foliage, lots of greenery, but just these tiny, tiny little roots that are not that strong compared to what we get out of Peru. It likes that high altitude to make it more of a hormonal balancer. So this might be good for some people to support their progesterone estrogen balance, right? And many people or many women going through menopause start to work with that one. Ashwagandha also might be helpful there too. So we, um, that, that's one of, one of the herbs in there. Another one that's in this blend that I think is probably one of my favorites is the Shazandra. Now, this is a really cool, cool herb uh, because it's in, from the Chinese tonic perspective, it's one of the only herbs that has all five flavors. So sweet, sour, bitter, spicy, and salty, all in the same berry. So when you chew on a shizandra berry, it's like, it's like this action-packed flavor profile that's kind of starting at one flavor, snaking into another, moving into another. It's got quite a bit of flavor to it. In that perspective, from the Chinese uh, tonic herbalism perspective, when, you, when all five flavors are activated, it also activates all of the meridian channels. So it functions on all meridians. I find this one to be more astringent though and tightening. So it's strengthening the tissues. Any area of weakness and flaccidity in the tissues, it's gonna help strengthen those. So that might be if you've got valves um, in your digestive tract that are not closing properly. That might be toning the musculature or the legs. If you've got some cellulose, that might be getting the hormone function in the body tightened and moving properly. That might be, if you're a woman, helping with prolapsed uterus. If you're a man, that might help with premature ejaculation. <laughs> it might help with all these kinds of tightening and toning the tissues, right? So I like that one in this blend. Um, that's sh sh or shizandra berry. I've been enjoying Shizandra for a long time. There's an old line in China that is, or an old kind of fable that you eat uh, Shizandra berries for a hundred days. It's called the hundred day Shizandra berry challenge. If you eat them for a hundred days, your skin will be as clear as a porcelain doll and all your internal organs will be renewed. So strengthening and supporting the internal organs and clearing up skin issues. That's another one that might be good for that eczema case, for example, or dermatitis or any of these kinds of things. So Often it's these chronic conditions that adaptogens over time start to heal. The one challenge is that they don't work always so quick. You need to take them for a couple of weeks before you really start to see some of the benefits. And the other challenge to that is that many of the benefits of adaptogens are things that you may not notice always. Like, for example, you don't notice when you don't feel irritable and your blood sugars are not spiking. You sure notice when your blood sugars are spiking, but as soon as your blood sugars are regulated, most of us don't notice that. We don't notice those things. Um, and we just feel good. We're like, great, I just feel good. So it's hard to always quantify. And this is one of the other challenges with adaptogens is when it comes to doing peer reviewed scientific uh, placebo blind studies, we don't have that many that show the exact same result because different people are getting different results from them um, in all these different cases. So it's much more uh, something that's been used for a long period of time. And many of these adaptogens, like I was saying, have thousands of 
maybe you know 20 years 30 years of clinical studies done on them mixed results so sometimes we can figure out what kind of chemistry it is sometimes we can't all right back to this blend we got ashwagandha chatavari shizandra we got maca in this one we also have a brown seaweed remember i mentioned seaweed there's a kombu extract in this that has a high level of the fucoxanthins and fucoidin fucoxanthins are like seaweeds flavonoids essentially they're seaweeds kind of um, color pigments and those things that help with deep cellular bed uh, regeneration and oxidative damage in that sense. The fuco or fucoidin, which is in brown seaweeds, that's in this one in the kombu extract, is more of something that's going to work with immunomodulating effects. It's like the mermaid version of the mushroom. <coughs> Sorry. So um, that's that's exactly what we want. We need some kind of adaptogenic immunomodulant quality to our blends, or I believe we should, and this is what's in that one. All right, beyond that, there's a little bit of goji berries. Goji berry is just another one of these kind of tonic adaptogenic herbs that supports the immune system. There's lots of flavonoids, lots of antioxidants in it, a very good food, number one food in Chinese medicine. And there's something called lotus pollen in this one. Lotus is synonymous with the third eye. So it's more for intuition and hormone kind of balancing and just picking up that dream state. Lotus pollen contains again, a lot of flavonoid groups to it. So it's one of those amazing ones that way. I, I tend to put this one into a drink and we're gonna make a drink a little bit later with it, with Elevate and that one. And I'll just kind of share with that as we go. The other one though, that, that blend is amazing. Highly recommend it for both teenagers going through like hormonal shifts and all of us as we get older, kind of when we need to sink back into our heart and or our imbalances are in our body and we want something kind of cooling down our stress load um, and really bringing us back into our body. So that one, we consider it to be more for healthy glow, to build glow to, in Chinese medicine, there's a, there's a term called Shen. Shen is the spirit. It's housed in the heart. And it's like, how is that person's spirit? It's showing up with glow. Many of these adaptogens have that kind of function in this blend. The other one is resilience. And I wanna share this. These two blends are straight herbal powders. They're different from our hot tonic herbal latte elixirs in the sense that they are straight up herbal powders. They're more potent and you might add them into smoothies. You might add them into drinks. They wouldn't make a drink on their own. Although we also make these little Pac-Man pills and munch them down like that. Resilience though is more of our adaptogens for stress, fight or flight. It's a little more young in nature. It's a little more energizing in nature. I see a lot of type A people who burn out do really well in a blend like this. In fact, um, it used to be called sacred masculine and we realized that it was more effective for women these days than men because a lot of them are type A mamas who are like, go, go, go. And they're taking uh, on a couple of jobs. They're taking on two or three children. They've got a husband that's like managing another couple of kids. They're commuting, they're multitasking and they're burning out because they're doing too many things. Resilience kind of gives that edge. It's one of those blends that's really to support energizing deep cellular bed nutrition and really function at that level. So the main chief herb in this is Eleuthero, that Siberian ginseng, but we also got some pretty powerful warrior herbs in there. This has that he shu wu that I mentioned for toning the kidneys and uh, adrenals and kind of restorative, one of my favorite herbs um, for the winter months and really for just restoring the body. It's also got shilajit and shilajit is a deep mineral pitch that grows in the high Himalayas, oozes out of the rocks in the summer. This one, shilajit means rock warrior. So it's that kind of, that's its Sanskrit name. It's this invincible rock warrior. So it has a deep cellular bed regenerating quality. It's also super high in minerals and the number one source, natural source of fulvic acid and humic acid, which are both two deep cellular bed detoxifiers, helping pull out radioactive isotopes and heavy metals and crazy stuff like that. We only want to take a tiny bit of shilajit because too much can be strong on the body. So there's just a little bit in this blend, but Hishuwu and Shilajit are two great ones that go with the Eleuthero. There's also a Stragalus, helping to tone the lungs, give more deep immune support, 
And there's also reishi and cordyceps. The combination of reishi and cordyceps together. The reason is, is that reishi opens up, calms down the body and opens us up, uh, relaxing our lungs, whereas cordyceps opens us up to better oxygenation and gets us better cellular oxygenation. So the two of them get more oxygen into the body and give us more energy in general. Reishi also calms us down, cordyceps gives us energy. So we have this kind of, again, similar to the Shatavari and ashwagandha in the other blend, those two work in that yin-yang kind of duality aspect. Other ones in here are licorice. Licorice is that kind of soothing, calming to the whole inflammation throughout the body. It's a good one to blend together some of these more powerful herbs. And then there's also pine pollen in this one. Talked about that for a minute. And a little bit of cayenne to kind of spice it up and get the blood moving. These kind of blends you can make on your own too. We've just been curating for a while, playing with many different iterations of working with tonic herbs and found these two to be the best we have for working with either opening up the healthy glow and stress support or giving the body more energy and kind of fortifying, giving more libido, more strength and stamina, which is what resilience is about. Okay, so that's those two. Um, I tend to like making formulas like this together. I play with this type of thing all the time. At home, I've got a cupboard full of different herbal powders and I start to play with them. So one of my recommendations is to Get out and like invest in some adaptogens. Invest in a elixir kitchen. Make yourself a drink protocol that is a way you can start to restore your body and, and get one meal a day. Maybe if you're a person who wants to eat three square meals a day, maybe this is your mid-afternoon or your pre-breakfast coffee alternative, something along that line. I find even at the shop when we have elixirs going for our team at Harmonic Arts, everyone's way more proactive and way more energetic for that mid-afternoon blues. So even at work, this is a great one to work with is to make an adaptogen latte, of some form like that, that's gonna help really support the body uh, with that. So that's what I wanna make for you guys tonight. We don't have tons of time. It's just like always squeezing into these small windows, um, but I will answer a few more questions. Then I'm gonna make some adaptogen lattes and just kind of give you an easy way to do that and talk a bit about elixir crafting in general. Okay. There's, there's a lot of questions in here. So, um, are adaptogens good for fertility? I just want to touch in on that. Yes, that is a big one. Although I'll say with most herbs, once a woman is pregnant, don't take more herbs. That's when we start to slow down. Many herbs that have an effect on the lower abdominal area, whether it's laxative or diuretic um, or just even soothing that area, they're counterindicated in the first three months of pregnancy. So, Yes, many adaptogens will help support fertility, both in men and women. You know, both uh, Shizandra and Hishu Wu are two that have been shown to help increase sperm count in men. Uh, Shizandra is tightening the uterus, toning that whole side, working with those kind of things. So um, the maca is in the radiance for another person who asked the question. Um, and I, I just, I love that blend. It's one of my favorite, it tastes good. Uh, it's, it's awesome. I make these little candies. Maybe I'll talk about those first before we get into more questions. This is a way I like to make them is I essentially take a powder and I'll just tell you how to make little, what I call power or Pac-Man power pills. And these are, these are really simple. They're just honey. That's all they are mixed in with herbal powder. This is an old pill making thing. You, you essentially take a little bowl, put a little bit of honey in with your powder, make it a nice thick paste and then roll these in your hand, roll them in your hand and have a second bowl with more powder in it. Once they're rolled, you dust them in more powder, set them out on a sheet to dry and you have these nice little Pac-Man pills and they taste really good because they got a bit of honey in them. So I'll just kind of uh, bite into one. You can kind of see, well, it doesn't matter. See halfway through, chew on them like a candy. These are a favorite way for me to take adaptogens is to make these little pills at night and have them that way. Another one is to make a drink. So I'll get into that. Let's just see our adaptogens process. Um, I'm just asking, just going to answer a few more questions here because we've got so many of you online. I just appreciate you all jumping on. Uh, okay. All right. So let's see. Um, okay. A person's asking, uh, Sabina is asking about sustainability. What should we consider when weighing uh, consuming adaptogens with sustainably 
for the native peoples whose territories and medicines place these adaptogens are from. Well, I'll tell you, um, wild foraging herbs this is just an ethical question because there's too many people on the planet. So wild foraging other people's medicine from their lands is not an ideal thing. I'm a big proponent now after being in the herbal industry for the last three, four decades, my whole life essentially, my first job in a health food store, I was 12 years old. Uh, and I've been in that environment since the beginning of my adult life, uh, is that wild foraging is no longer a sustainable practice on the planet when it comes to producing herbs for large groups of people. It's why Harmonic Arts does what it does. We are about organic farming. Almost all our herbs are organic. They come from organic source um, that are farmed. It's much better to farm or uh, basically cultivate out wildlands if you're gonna use wildlands in that to help sustainably grow these things. It's not, the idea isn't we're trying, we don't wanna try and take these herbs from the people who need them. Uh, essentially, it's that creating more demand for higher quality tonic herbs increases the organic farming and therefore creates jobs around this and therefore creates um, healthier people in general on the planet. I mean, many lands are stripped down, forests are cut down to grow cows in order to make McDonald's burgers. So that's my opinion on that. Uh, you know, it depends on how far we want to go. But my, 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 my true belief is that we want to support organic agriculture and we want to promote these kinds of herbs because they're healing people at a chronic imbalance level. They're supporting people to be more vital. And when we're more vital, we become more powerful. When we're more powerful, we do better on this planet in general. So that's, that's, that's where I come from. I am a power to the people, power to the plants, get plants into people, make it easy for them to take. Therefore they take them. And that's what we're going to talk about mostly tonight. Um, all right. So adaptogens for hot flash is what Laura's asked. Um, and yeah, um, for hot flashes, uh, things like Angelica, the Dong Kwai, some of the female tonics might be a better, better way to go. Some women use maca. Um, I've seen a number of women just see maca as a real support. Remember that a hot flash is this heat moving upwards. So calming it down. You want yin cooling herbs. The other thing is, is that your body is trying to use up these, these reserves of hormones that are in all of your tissues. And so there's gonna be some imbalances. The adaptogens that might help are things like Eleuthero and Ashwagandha and Maca to kind of bring that back down. That'll be my quick one there. <clears throat> all right. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to another one. Um, are adaptogens good for autoimmune diseases? Not everyone is, but most of them are. Um, there's quite a few that are very gentle, but again, some of them that have strong personality may not necessarily be ideal for autoimmune. They're much better than our single directional herbs. So many of our immunostimulants we want to watch out for, but many of the medicinal mushrooms are some of the best things for autoimmune. But you can see things like um, astragalus can be very supportive for autoimmune cases. Goji berries, Many of these are foods, so they're quite gentle, right? Um, they're quite gentle in that sense. So, all right. Um, okay, look at these, all these, all these people raising their hands. I'm getting overloaded with questions. Okay, let's just kind of jump on to this next one. What would be a good adaptogen for immune disorders? Well, most of these would be medicinal mushrooms are my top one. Kishu Wu and Fo Ti, yes, they are the same thing. All right. I am sorry to all of you who I'm not going to jump onto your questions right this moment um, because I just don't got, a, got time to do that. And I really want to make you a drink and show you how easy this is to do. Okay, so I've got some hot water here. I've got some MCT oil, coconut oil of some form, and a bit of honey. Uh, I'm going to talk about basically crafting up a drink with adaptogens. I've got a number of different elixirs we've done in Harmonic Arts, like a turmeric with ashwagandha kind of latte. This has turkey tail and ashwagandha as its adaptogenic function, but it's also got, it's a golden milk, right? So it's got this anti-inflammatory effect. We might make one of those up in the right time. We're gonna make Elevate tonight. Uh, and because of time-wise, I don't have time to share all these, but I'll just give you a quick, five mushroom drinking chocolate is our immune support mushroom blend. I love this one, it tastes good. It's the only one that has any sweetener in it. And I will talk about sweetener in a minute. Kickstart's another adaptogenic latte that is really a coffee substitute with sarsaparilla that helps 
but the adrenal support. It's also got maca in it. It's got cacao in it. And it's got a little bit of chaga mushroom in it as well. So that's one. It's also got dandelion root and a couple other things. Really to tone the support blood sugar stabilizing and give us more kick. So a little bit of caffeine. There's mate in that one. I like that one. But I also like one called Activate that we do. And I often make kick debate, activate and kickstart together. Activate is more of a superfood type one. And, and there's kind of this crossover where superfoods meet adaptogens. And I love this category of crossover because many of the superfoods, what really is classified as a superfood, and it's overblown now too. There's a lot of people who might uh, hate on the concept of superfoods because blueberries are a superfood and then they don't get given the, the that, whereas Things like maca get given superfood, chocolate given superfood, mesquite, lacuma, those are all ones that are in this blend. And essentially what it is, is it's what, how I define it is high nutrient um, density, really high nutritional density and lower calorie content. There's much more nutritional density to this. So this is more of a superfood latte with reishi and chaga and shilajit, and then the cacao and the maca, the mesquite, the lacuma. I love that one. Um, but what we're going to really make, I don't have time to share with you all of those. Just know that uh, at Harmonic Arts, we do a number of lattes or herbal lattes or elixirs that can be used to craft up the best drinks possible. And that's how I found to be the best way to get herbs into the body is to make these elixirs. So that's what I'm going to make for you. I know it's going to be on the digital campfire, so we can't quite see it or can't quite taste it. You just have to use your taste of vision to pretend. But some of you have already tried these, so you know. Um, what they're like. We're going to make Elevate tonight because it's nighttime and I don't really want a stimulating drink. I'm going to make a nice gentle drink and I'm going to mix in with the radiance to make this kind of drink. This one, just to touch in on it, is a lion's mane based drink, a nootropic type adaptogen drink. It's got that lotus pollen in it. It's got the green tea pollen in it. It's got a herb called lacuma. Lacuma is an egg fruit that grows out of South America. It's very similar to an avocado. Uh, it's actually in that same family, but it's more for like skin health and beauty and it supports the body that way. Um, and then it's also got some coconut in it and it's got a cardamom finish. So it's one of my favorites. Why I like making drinks like this. First off, I consider the Vitamix or a blender to be the modern day witch's cauldron. And I think it's important for people to start blending up drinks and making their own adaptogen lattes because we know uh, there's been many studies done now that when you taste the herbs, they send chemical signals to the brain or the food or whatever it is, sends a chemical signal to the brain that tells the gut how to start responding properly and how to absorb it better. And you actually get much better response from the chemical signal from the brain than you do from the actual taste and the actual chemistry of the herb itself. So we need to taste these things. Putting them in capsules is not always going to give us the best results. We can take far less if we eat them. All right, so the modern day witch's cauldron, double and double boil in trouble. That's right, we're gonna do that and you can blend it up. Essentially what I'm gonna do for any one of these is a good tablespoon of our elixir for a drink and I'm just gonna make one for myself. So really simply, I also believe that it's important to, oh, I'm gonna use this other one, it's already open. I believe that it's important for us to um, make sure that as we're doing this, we start to play and have fun. It's gotta taste good. We believe in something called the triple win. It's gotta be high quality, um, best quality ingredients that have a therapeutic effect and it's gotta taste good. It's gotta be easy to do, it's gotta taste good and it's gonna have that therapeutic effect. So in this case, making a good elixir often means adding a bit of calorie content to it to increase the absorption. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of our Elevate, really simply put it in. And I'm going to add in one little teaspoon, maybe a half a tablespoon here, because I got a tablespoon. Uh, oh, this is almost done. Of our, all right, here we go. Just dump it in of the radiance. Um, I'll put that together very simply in my blender. You can kind of see it right there. Typically that, and that's going to be enough for a drink. 
The reason I'm going to add honey and coconut oil or MCT oil in this case is I want to fatten this thing up and I want to get some sweet. I want it to taste good. We can do this without, I do plenty of drinks where I just stir it into my tea and literally just stir elixir powders or some of these tonics into our tea. When we add a little bit of honey, this is the place I like to use honey. Now we know that sweeteners can cause candida and can create all kinds of havoc in the body. I personally don't prescribe to sweetener being the problem. I think it's actually the modern approach to working with sweetener and our, our lifestyle around it. There's sweetener in everything and that's part of the problem. If we use sweetener specifically as a delivery system, AKA a way to drive the things we want to get into the body, deeper into the body, then it's a really useful tool. It increases the enzymes in the saliva. It also gets the pancreas pumping and opening up digestion, and it makes things easier to absorb, plus it tastes good. So that's why I like a little bit of honey. Uh, I don't really use any other sweetener than honey, um, but this is how the format I'd use. So I'd use like a teaspoon. I might need to do this, to scrape it off. And then I would use a little bit of fat. You know that fat slows down the absorption, so butter is my preferred, but in this case, how we like to make them is I'll take a little bit of MCT oil and put that in. That's going to be my herbal latte. You can, it's basically the same thing as adding cream and sugar to a coffee. We're going to do a herbal latte with superfoods and herbs and add in our fattener that's a better quality fat, something that's going to increase uh, blood-brain barrier crossover of the herbs. MCT oil is classically known to help do that. And a little bit of honey to open up the absorption. Okay, I got a little bit of water here. Really simply, one person's worth, that's about three, 400 mils. And I know I'm bold, I'm not even gonna put the lid on, but I've got it on one. Mama should tell you, always put the lid on, so don't follow my, my example. Right. I'm just going to blend it up. When you blend fats, they emulsify into the water. Also, the lacuma helps emulsify it too in this blend. And now I've got myself a nice herbal latte. Very simply. The other thing we can do with this is we can start with, instead of water, we can start with tea. Oh yeah. Mm. See, that is super yummy and super easy to do. Uh, this is the instructions on every one of our packages. It's really simple if you buy our product, how to, how to work with it. But you can do this at home, playing with your own uh, adaptogens to start to make these kind of lattes. My recommendation is you add a bit of calorie content in the form of a little bit of sweet and a little bit of fat. Now, there are people who are doing them with stevia or monk fruit sweetener or xylitol or these non-glycemic sweeteners. Honey is definitely going to increase the glycemic load in the body. But wow, oh, this one... First off, Elevate is one of my favorites in general, but when I mix it with a bit of Radiance, it gives it a little more with the Shazandra Berry flavor and just like, just a nice, gentle kind of tonic for the evening, so. Mm. I really wish you guys could try this. Typically, I do this class in person, and it just happens to be that we need to, everyone that I know now lives inside of one of these little boxes, inside of one of these little square machines. <laughs> You can also use this in coffee. That was a question from one of the um, people. Can I use this in coffee? Yes. I prefer versus like the Elevate, which is like a creamy cardamom drink. This is much more of a like a kind of a milky, creamy cardamom with the coconut and the lacuma um, and the lion's mane. They all have that nice creamy flavor. I much prefer to make the chocolate ones in coffee. So I use this, either the Resilience, I put in, all the time I put this into coffee. In fact, I've stopped, I can't even drink coffee unless it has mushrooms in it. So I typically put mushrooms in coffee and um, I love it, it's my favorite. A little cinnamon, a little bit of mushrooms. I, I mean, I don't drink a lot of coffee, but when I do, I think it tastes terrible unless it has mushrooms in it now. But I've also used this resilience a few times. And if you like that kind of like a little bit of spice, there's a little cayenne in there, that works well. Many people I know use the five mushroom as a mushroom mocha. So they make that kind of thing. And chocolate and coffee are both delivery systems. They both drive them deeper in. So my advice when making herbal lattes, 
find a couple of delivery systems to drive the herbs deeper into the body. Hot water also breaks down a little bit of the fiber in the herbs, therefore making them more bioavailable. Uh, it doesn't denature them like it would with peppermint. Many of these adaptogens are going to be two to three year old roots, or some of them are mushrooms. Only a few that are leaves, like holy ginostemma. Ginostemma is another amazing adaptogen, one of my favorites, um, that is used in replacement of green tea. Green tea in itself is a bit of an adaptogen. It's the number one beverage on the planet, and it's because it has this adaptogenic effect. It tones the body, right? So I might use a green tea base and then throw in this Elevate. That would be great. Or I might make like a nettle, holy basil, peppermint tea. That's one of my favorites for, for Elevate. Uh, so start playing with them. The idea of a drink like this, the idea of making this type of elixir is you can then load and stack up the intelligence of many different types of plants. So in this case right now, I think what I'm drinking is maybe, I don't know, a dozen different plants, the intelligence of a dozen plants. I'm not getting tons of each one, but that's how an adaptogen should be taken. Slow and small doses consistently. So make it into a drink. That's my favorite way. Mm. Oh, that's so good. All right. So um, that's to begin with. It's very simply, I could make one more if we want, but I, I don't know if we need to. I would make an activate really simply. Again, start to play with your adaptogens. Know that when it comes to making them into drinks, most of them are very safe and most of them have quite a good flavor to them. That's what I like about these herbs. They're gentle. They have a panacea effect for the whole body. They function for many different people and they work on all different levels in that sense. So they're an easy herb to get going with when it comes to plant medicine. Very different from some of the Western herbal uh, medicines that don't have that same effect. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I will say that if you have a chronic imbalance of some form, I just see a couple of questions around like chronic acid reflux or chronic inflammation. Um, adaptogens are where you want to start to look to in the long run. You might need a surface thing right away. Like for example, with chronic acid reflux, um, we see things like meadow sweet and ginger being really helpful or apple cider vinegar being really helpful in the interim, but we might go to some of the adaptogens for our long game, right? The adaptogens are our long game health protocol because Nowadays, with the medical system keeping us alive till we're 85 or our average age is getting up there, it's getting up quite a bit higher. I mean, actually, in the last couple of years is the first time when the average age has started to decrease. And that's just because we're overfed and undernourished, um, but we're living longer. But a lot of us aren't living healthy, vibrant lives when we're older. So um, you, you don't wanna, I just believe we should be taking adaptogens on a consistent basis, especially as we get into our 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. These become some of the best medicines for us uh, that don't have a lot of counterindications with pharmaceuticals. They're not like St. John's Ward or Ginkgo that have some counterindications. Many of these are quite gentle on the body and their, their LDL or lethal dose is super high. You, you need to take like half your body weight in ashwagandha before you have a lethal dose. So you can take a pretty good amount. Now, sometimes you don't need more. A typical dose of most of these types of herbs would be like one to two grams a day. That would be a good heavy dose. If you're doing a formula and you're gonna make a drink like this, I might do like five grams of an elixir and two grams of a kind of herbal tonic into one drink. That's gonna be a nice potent, potent drink. Okay, I'm going to take a bit of time, oh, I just love this one, to answer some questions and go through this. And all right, so um, Isaac's asking, best adaptogen um, potentator for optimal absorption, shilajit, organic sulfur, camu camu, um, cocoa, ginger, etc. I think he's just saying that. Shilajit is amazing for absorption, by the way, um, for helping absorb minerals. Uh, and He's talked about camu camu. That's another one of these kind of adaptogenic berries. We see all those, half those ones that are superfoods like acai and camu camu and goji berry. They kind of, kind of dovetail in that category where they have so many benefits for all of that kind of thing. All right. Okay. Um, a couple other questions I have on the other 
channel here is on why should I not take too much Shilaji? Well, one thing about Shilaji is think of it as 10,000 years of compressed ecosystems that are oozing out of the rocks and anything that didn't die for 10,000 years is still in there. So you want to also be careful with Shilaji to make sure you get a reputable source. We double because we like arsenic and lead and heavy metals in shilajit if it's in the, the rock that the shilajit oozed out of. So we want to have it tested, make sure that there's no heavy metals in it. And so we shouldn't take a large amount anyway, regardless, because it's so potent. We just want small amounts. Again, it has that high fulvic acid. It's actually a bioremediator pulling out these heavy metals from our system and giving us better nutrition. Uh, so it really works on that level, but Half a gram is what they say in the Ayurvedic literature. Half a gram is your dosage. Don't go more than a gram. Um, so, whereas many of these herbs, we can do two, three grams, four grams if we want, no problem. Shilajit's one, you don't. Okay. Okay, the uh, question is how do I like to take radiance in an elixir? I really like it in an elixir like this, but I also love it into these little pills. Another way I like to make it is actually plain yogurt. I love to take adaptogen powders, and radiance is a great example where I'll take a scoop and throw it right into uh, yogurt and stir it in uh, like that. I've seen some people work with some of these as what they call adult fun dip. This Elevate and the Radiance both have been used uh, by a customer of ours that gave us this feedback. They take a banana and they dip it into these adaptogen powders and then eat it off the banana. <laughs> Use the banana like an adult fun dip. That's another way you could do with it. Uh, some of them like Resilience goes great in a uh, soup, as a soup base. Um, so you might put it into a bone broth kind of alternative, that type of thing. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> Let's see. What else can I answer here? Okay. Yep. Yeah, again, would I sprinkle into tea or food? I love putting these kind of adaptages into tea. I love drinking herbal tea. It's one of my favorites. And I like to amp it up. I always like to stack on top. Now, one question that sometimes comes up is, can I take too many? Yes, you can, but typically if you're taking a, drinking a cup or two a day, that's not gonna be too many. Um, and you know, in some of these classes that I do in person, we'll make like 10 of these adaptogen drinks in one class. And yeah, in that class, you've tried like 100 different plants and that's, that might be too many on a regular basis, but you're gonna find your one that you like and you're gonna take it consistently. And I've, I've seen in my kitchen, I've got like, like I said, a whole cupboard full of different adaptogenic powders, and I'm dabbling and playing with them. And eventually, as you do this more, it becomes a bit more intuitive. And something that I want to invite you to, as just a side conversation to have with you all, is listen to your internal authority. Uh, too much of our power is given over to external authorities. Even asking me about herbs is using me as an external authority. Listen to how it feels in your body. Start to play with these herbs. Start to take them for a consistent period of time and make your own decisions. How do these affect me? How are they supporting my health? Do some research, but then listen to your internal authority. Don't get too worried about taking too much of the wrong thing. Uh, your body will tell you. It'll be like, whoa, okay, you take it too much, you got this weird gut thing going on or you're breaking out in hives. Typically, these kind of things are not common with adaptogenic herbs, but just learn to listen to your body. I just, I really highly want to invite you to that, especially right now. It's not on topic here, but with the world media the way it is, uh, there's too many external authorities, and most of us are giving over all our power to external authority. The beauty of adaptogens and the beauty of herbal medicine is when we put it in our body, it educates our internal authority, and it gives us strength and fortification from the inside out. That's why I think they're the medicine of the time. And that's why I think it's important for us to uh, be the adaptogen we wanna be in the world and to listen to our internal wisdom versus spend too much time regulating on other people's authority. Okay, so a um, couple more questions in here. I'll just try to answer through in the last bit of this. Um, would you take resilience elixir regularly in the morning? Heck yeah, I totally take this one, that one almost every morning in a coffee. That's the way I like it or in a hot chocolate or just on its own. Um, I find 
three weeks of taking adaptogens of or uh, an adaptogen blend like this, and I feel really fortified. So I'll usually take three weeks on, a week off. That's how I was saying before. What spices are classified as adaptogens? That's another great question. Uh, I would say, like, not so many are totally adaptogens. Spices are taxi drivers, in my opinion. Spices are the herbs we use to get the adaptogens to where we want to go. So herbs like ginger and cinnamon work as great carriers. Like our activate has cinnamon in it. Our radiance has ginger in it. Our um, resilience has a cayenne in it. <clears throat> Sorry, I chewed on that little herbal pill. And I'm talking the whole time. Um, but essentially, adaptogens are, they, they're better with a bit of carrier. The coconut and the honey in this make that part of that carrier. But spices work like a taxi driver. So, okay. Um, question about, can you still use an expired adaptogen elic or expired elixir? Taste it. Yes, you can. I've used tons of expired product in my life, but I've also tasted some bad expired product. I'm like, well, not for me. Again, internal authority, um, people put, we put expiry dates on our products and so do other companies because we want to keep ourselves, well, basically we don't want to get sued or give you something that's going to be bad. Uh, typically, most of these herbs will last longer. They may not be as potent in two or three years, but I have some elixirs in my cupboard that are five years old and I'm drinking them because I find that they still work and they still taste great. If they start to taste rancid or something like that. The ones that have coconut in them can sometimes go rancid after a while. Um, then just taste that and be like, okay, that's that's gone off. But otherwise, um, yeah, I totally would. It was me. All right. Um, um, how do you powder your herbs and mushrooms? Well, a coffee grinder is a great one to do. Um, with mushrooms, by the way, you want to do like a mushroom extract like this that's pre-extracted taking powdered mushrooms, just straight whole powdered mushrooms is hard on the gut. Similar to like this piece of chaga I have here. If I just uh, 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 eat it, uh, 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 it's, it's not going to digest. I can't get it through the chitin layer and the lignans. It needs to be pre broken down. So with mushrooms, I don't just powder them. The only reason I'd powder them is if I want to extract them in hot water faster. So for example, powder my chaga, turn it into a tea, drink the liquid, right? That's what I would do. And coffee blender, that's an easy way to do that. All right, the pills are awesome. Yes, honey pills. I highly recommend you make Pac-Man power pills. These are easy, they're fun. They're a great way to play with them and they make them taste good. The other thing you can do with some adaptogens is put them into syrups. I've also seen people make mead or make ferments with them. Many of the old world beers were made with herbs. Like I said at the beginning, rhodiola mead, you know, was a common mead. All right. Um, okay, for, all right, let's see, for whom would, would you use rhodiola regularly from 27 to 36? I would use rhodiola in the winter, that'd be my, or just like to like kind of protect the body. I'd also use it if I was the type of person who could use a little bit of tightening and toning. It's rhodiola has a rose type flavor, so make sure you like that. Um, I, I like rhodiola. Personally, I just, it's not my one I use all the time myself, whereas someone like my dad, he's got the type of body build that rhodiola works really good for him. So it's one of his favorite herbs, right? So just make sure it's kind of energetically matching you. And even if it's not perfectly energetically matching you, that's okay. Um, that's why we take formulas often that are more neutral and balanced. Okay. All the harmonic arts mushrooms are extracted. Another question, just answering that. Um, can you use coconut milk instead of water? You can. Actually, we often do nut milks too. Sometimes I'll do, I'll make my own nut milk for making an elixir. Um, I'll, I'll do that. I often use tea. Uh, so there's many different ways you can kind of build this out. And we do, we got, yeah, I've done a number of different, I've played with a number of those. Um, and maybe we'll throw up a blog here on elixirs at some point to kind of just share more about that. Uh, okay. I think... That's about all I've got time for. Um, I appreciate you guys. Again, we didn't have a lot of time to kind of go through each individual adaptogen, but please <clears throat> look on Like if you type in ashwagandha, you're going to get a million hits from websites. There's lots of places you can find this information. My goal here is to put a couple of brain hooks into you 
and a couple of heart hooks to say, hey, these are an awesome way to keep your body resilient, to keep you healthy, to keep you strong and vital all the way through your, your ages, through your life. And you can make them into these hot tonic elixir drinks that taste fabulous, give you some energy, and really make this an easy and fun part of a lifestyle that can cut down on some of your calories and give you much better nutrition. Okay, adaptogens are a big piece of my life, and I hope they become a big piece of yours if they aren't already. All right, thanks for joining me. And please come next week. And just to touch in for those of you who came late, if you missed any of these webinars, go to harmonicartslive.com and all of the recordings are kept there. So uh, go there and that's where we'll, we'll see you then. Okay, thanks for joining us. You can also get our product at harmonicarts.ca or many different uh, whole, whole foods and health food stores all over Canada. And again, power to the people. Big love from the medicine and from me. We'll see you next time.